It's championship time in Oxford, Mississippi, as your Oxford Chargers are in the 5A state title game against Wayne County this Saturday, 7 o'clock, Vaught Hemingway Stadium. And we'd like to welcome you into Rebel Watch, a special edition of the Oxford Chargers. I'm your host, Browning Stubbs, Madison Avon, Colin Cody, and Breck Jones. How we doing, guys? Doing great. Doing great. Happy to be here. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. And guys, Come on, it's been a wonderful season for the Oxford Chargers. A lot of ups and downs, some close games, an ESPN game against Starkville. But Madison, I mean, let's talk about what's been your favorite game of this season. For sure, it has been Germantown. You know, they were struggling a little bit the first few games of the playoffs, you know, against Vicksburg. You know, they barely came out of that game alive. You know, they were focused on the West Point game, but this game, it was a close game. It was a fun game. You know, they ended up winning 40-33, to and so that was definitely one of the best games of the season. And, Breck, how can we let – or how can, how can we not talk about the Crosstown Classic? I don't know, man. You know, growing up in this area, it's always a big deal, and – uh, the Oxford Lafayette game. Oxford's been on a streak now. Lafayette had that streak with when Jeremy Liggins was there, and Oxford's kind of switched it back around. And I, I think that's what really got the game. What was the kind of the propeller for this season for Oxford? And guys, this team they have discovered a lot of adversity, and they've overcome a lot. Madison, what's been the biggest storyline that that you think Oxford's had to overcome this season? You know, early preseason, you know, they had their two, they had two suspended players with All-State running back Kenzie Phillips and wide receiver Kyrie White after, you know, several burglary incidents. But, you know, just when that talent was leaving, new talent came up in, up for the Chargers. You know, they got two great wide receivers with Ken Presley, who averages almost 70 yards per game, and wide receiver Jimmy Greaser, who averages about 65 yards per game. So that's been a huge help despite the small loss that they had before the season. And take to get this title to Oxford. You know, it's it's they've gone through adversity. This is the third year in a row they've gotten there. They can learn something from Chad Kelly's Uncle Jim. You know, he got to four Super Bowls in a row, didn't win one. It's I think that after going through two in a row, you see what it's like. You're in your hometown. It's it, you're more comfortable, and I I think that that's really what's going to put them over the top. And Jack Abraham's dad, when I talked to him, talked about how they had to get tougher as they went along, and uh, I think they did that this year. I agree completely. The Chargers have overcome a lot this season. And when we come back, our very own Kelsey Davis will tell us how practice went this week and what the team's mindset is. We'll be versus Wayne County. Stay tuned. Rebel Watch will be right back. Welcome back to Rebel Watch. Our correspondent Kelsey Davis has more from Vault Hemingway Stadium with everything you need to know about the matchup on Saturday. Thanks, guys. I'm outside Vaught Hemingway Stadium where the Oxford High School Chargers will be taking on the Wayne County War Eagles this Saturday for the state championship. I got the chance to catch up with Coach Johnny Hill and a couple of the players to see how they feel about the upcoming game. Well, they play to win, and they love to compete, and they're going to, when we turn the lights on uh, Saturday night, they'll be ready. You know, I'm, I'm real, real excited about it, and, and um, if anybody deserves to win a state championship, this bunch does. Head coach Johnny Hill and the rest of his staff have spent all week preparing his team for the biggest game of their season, and it seems that everyone involved is feeling pretty confident about their chances. We've been practicing great all week, and uh, I think we're actually ready to win it this year. It's been three times since we done fought for this, and third time you the charm, so hey, we're going to go out, play hard, do what we got to do. And this game holds a little extra special meaning for these players as they try to send Coach Hill out with one last win. Been coached for a long time with no state championship, so you just got to do it for him. After a season of adversity, this Oxford High School team is ready to prove that they're the real deal. You got to show them that we can do it. We can go out there and play how we played the whole season and not get there and fail. I don't think anybody's outworked us. Uh, we, we, we've done everything we can do. And now. Oxford High School has made it to the state championship the past two years, but have come up just a little bit short. So this really is the last chance for the Chargers. They're graduating a huge senior class, including three D1 commits, and as well, it is Coach Johnny Hill's last game as a head coach. Reporting for Rebel Watch, I'm Kelsey Davis. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kelsey. Now, Wayne County has been a little bit of a Cinderella story. Nobody would have picked them to make it all the way to the title game after a sour 19-13 loss to Laurel at the end of the season. But in the South Regional title game, guys, they ended up beating Laurel 55-27 on the road. 
Madison, what's so impressive about this team? Their triple threat offense. You know, they have um, their running back Jordan, who ran for about uh, ran for over a thousand yards this season. They have Cooley, who ran for over about over 700 yards, and their quarterback Stewart, who ran for about 325 yards this season. So that is huge for Wayne County. Now, Colin, the Eagles, they got guys that are going to be playing on Saturday. Yeah. Talk to us about some of those players who you think could give Oxford trouble. And we, we all know who that is. And um, he's coming off the line. He's coming off fast. And that's Benito Jones. And he's, I hope he brings in intensity here at Ole Miss when he comes rolling in Oxford next year. But the, the Chargers, they're really going to have to um, put some guys on him and protect that side and keep Abraham safe because he's coming. He runs 4-8, and he's big. Now, Breck, every team in 5A is good. What's it going to take to beat a hot team right now in Wayne County? I, th I think you got to distance yourself. you got to get out and jump out to a lead and stay ahead and keep pushing the game. Oxford's kind of let a few people creep back into the games this year. And I think, like Colin said, you're really going to have to keep Jack Abraham upright. I mean, Benito Jones and that defensive line really is nasty. And I think for the Oxford to have a successful day, they're going to have to protect the quarterback. I agree. I think Wayne County is a very, very good team. And the Chargers will need to bring their A game Saturday night. Now, one thing that makes this team's coaching staff unique is the fact that there is always a student intern football coach. Our workhorse, David Kennedy, has the story. For the past two seasons, Oxford assistant offensive line coach Mike Healy has been part of the Chargers' pursuit of a state championship. As a former St. Pius High School football star and an Ole Miss hockey enforcer, he certainly has the background to develop into a good coach. What makes Healy unique is not only is he a full-time coach, but he is also a full-time student. What is his secret? Time management. Very busy. Wake up in the morning, go to class all day, go to student teaching for about three hours, three days a week, and then go right to practice from about 2.45 every day. I'm gone until about 7 to 7.30 every night. Time management isn't the only characteristic Coach Healy has that makes him a good young coach. Being personable and a vocal leader has made him respected within the program. Well, it's, it's interesting. He's, a, he's a, a great young man and a great young coach, really. He, uh, he does a great job motivating our kids. And, and, and I think the biggest thing in this profession is if you can work well with kids and get along with kids, you're going to have a bright future. Um, you know, Coach Hewitt came in last year, and uh, he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't near as vocal as he, as he is this year, but he's, uh, you know, really gotten comfortable with us. And he, uh, he comes out and motivates us each day, and I love having him around. He's a good guy. But things haven't always been easy for Coach Healy. Yeah, after a few weeks of working there, you know, I looked kind of distressed one day, kind of stressed out and tired, and Coach Herring just kind of gave me some words of encouragement and said somebody that wanted to work a job for free that he loves will probably be pretty successful at it. Healy plans to attend grad school at Ole Miss and continue coaching Oxford High School football with the dream of being a head coach one day. But for now, he is focused on getting Oxford High School their first ever state championship. For Rebel Watch, I'm Dan. Now, Coach Healy will be graduated by the end of the season and hopes that the Chargers retain him. Now, when we come back, I will be interviewing a future Ole Miss student and Oxford wide receiver DK Metcalf. Rebel Watch will be right back. Welcome back to Rebel Watch. I'm Browning Stubbs. Today, I have the number five wide receiver recruit in the country and Ole Miss commit DK Metcalf in studio. Thanks for coming in, DK. Thank you for having me. All right, DK, you guys have come so close to winning the state championship. Two years ago, you lose by touchdown. Last year, you lose by three points. What did you learn in those games? Uh, I learned that you can't come out and be flat on uh, offense or defense or special teams. Uh, you got to come out hard, um, can't wait for the opponent to attack, and then you react. You got to take the fight to them, and uh, you, know, you got to win special teams. Uh. Now, this season, you guys are off to a very great start. You're about to finish you know, in the state title game. But I want to ask you, what's been different about this season? And I'm sure there's got to be extra motivation with Coach Hill retiring. Uh, yes, sir. Um, Coach Hill retiring is one thing. Um, you know, been to the state championship twice, lost it. That's another one. Um, you know, this, I'm a senior. We got, what, 16 uh, seniors graduating on offense, another 16 on defense. Um, you know, it's, we got a lot at stake, and plus it's right there in our backyard. So. You no, know, just to win it at Ole Miss is, is going to be real, real fun, real nice. And your father, Terrence, he's been such a great influence on you. Just talk about what it means for him to be a mentor to you. Um, well, it's really cheating because, you know, my dad played in the NFL, and, you know, he knows what it takes to get there. And, you know, just very blessed that, you know, that he's my father. And he, he's been 
coaching, um, just not officially until last year, but he's been coaching uh, since I started playing football, and I just, I just love having him on the side. Now, your new quarterback, Shea Patterson, he, he's been spotted at some of your games, yeah. and it, it's going to be exciting to see you two in the red and blue. How well do you know him so far? Oh, man, Shea talked at least you know, twice a day, um, if, and once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Um, you know, he, every time he comes to Oxford, I'm all, we're always hanging out with each other. So you know, me and Shea are building a good relationship, um, and he's just a great person, great quarterback all around, good guy, and you know, I just love him. DK, is there anything that you'd like to say to Rebel Nation? How did tight. DK Metcalf, I want to thank you so much thank you. for coming in the Rebel Watch studio, and good luck this Saturday night. Thank you. All right, Breck, talk about Mr. Abraham and just everything that he's done in, in developing, you know, coaching the Buccaneers and, until where the, the program is now. Uh, they, they started the Buccaneers as a way to get the kids really together and they wanted them to grow up together where they could play together. They had seen some other communities and teams try the same thing. And they, they just wanted to try to build that team and try to build a strong high school program in Oxford that they thought that they could really develop here. And uh, so far it's worked. I mean, they've gotten to three state, straight na uh, state championships and uh, they're looking to get their title here. So I, I'd say it's working. They think it's gonna continue that way. He's done a great job indeed. Now, Johnny Hill has been in Oxford since 1989. He's built practically the program from the ground up into a powerhouse in Mississippi. Madison, what do you think he's meant to this community? You know, he is a community leader. You know, people look up to him. You know, he's, like you said, he's been here since the 80s. People trust him. People, people definitely know him. And it's somebody that the whole entire community can look to for basically anything. Colin, Johnny Hill, he's been known as a player's coach. I mean, how do you think his loss is going to impact the season, or excuse me, impact the team in the future? Oh, it's going to impact huge. Like, uh, he, like you said, he's a player coach. He's a player coach to the T, and um, he he's like a second dad to most of these kids. So a lot of the times, it's going to be hard to uh, bounce back and losing such a great influence and uh, father figure on the field. But hopefully, the Chargers can find somebody mm -hmm. to kind of fix, fill in the, uh, those shoes. Now, Breck, you got all these college football coaching jobs open. I think high school one's going to open up as well with Johnny Hill leaving the Chargers in retirement. Tell me, who are some of the big candidates to replace him? Most people think they're going to hire in-house. I mean, DK's dad, Terrence Metcalf, who was an All-American here, played in the NFL for a while. He, he just joined a year ago, but they think that he really might take over the program there. Um, Chris Cutcliffe, it was son of David Cutcliffe, obviously of Duke. He was at Ole Miss. And, He's an offensive, kind of the guru, offensive guru there on the team to, that's led them to have such great output this year. Guys, it's going to be a big topic of discussion, but whoever ends up taking the job in January will certainly have some big shoes to fill, but will also have a great foundation to work with. When we come back, we will all give our keys to the game and our prediction for Saturday's 5A state title game. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Rebel Watch. All right, guys. Keys to the game. Madison, how are the Chargers going to win this game? The secondary. The secondary has to show up. They've been just struggling these past few games. They, you know, they're almost costing the Chargers the game for a lot of this. So they can't let down and make these little mistakes. They have to show up. They have to be there. Colin? And like what we've all been saying all night, they have to step up and face adversity. I mean, earlier in the playoffs, they faced Vicksburg and Germantown, which they struggled in. But I'm looking for the offense. I'm looking for... Um, the mini Chad and Laquan <laughs> out there, DK and Abraham to step up and put some points up on the board. So, Breck? I, I think the key is really going to be the offensive line. I, I think if the offensive line can keep Abraham upright, like we talked about earlier, then I think that the, the off Chargers offense will have great success. And, I mean, they just got to block Benito Jones and those guys. All right, guys, now it's time for our favorite part of Rebel Watch, making the picks. The question I have, does Oxford – win its first ever state championship? I am going to say yes. I'm going to go 28-21. Oxford is going to pull this game out and take it home. I definitely feel like um, just being at home that Oxford is going to be lively and they're going to they're gonna come out hot. And I, I agree with you, Madison, 28-21. Same score. Uh, <laughs> copycat. Uh, it is what it is. I, I've got them going to win and I got Oxford winning 27-19. I, I think that Abraham will have a good game, 250 maybe, and I think DK will get him a few touchdowns too. You know, I got to agree. I am 
on the board with you guys. I think Oxford's going to take this one. 34 to 18, I think. Jack Abraham, DK Metcalf, you know, everyone's going to have a fantastic game. Send Johnny Hill off the right way. I mean, I, I bet you're going to see him on the players' shoulders, yeah. and it's going to be – it's going to be quite the scene about Hemingway Stadium. It's yeah. going to have a lot of fans there. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully a lot of the fans come out, and it's going to be a great one.